Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour on this here International Women's Day, where I get to celebrate wearing jeans and trainers under this desk and being allowed to talk on Telebox. Yeah, and I hang my head in shame. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to beat you by the head you know, like a fishwife in an you know, old-fashioned sexist trope. Yeah, men are so terrible, aren't they? If only women ran the world, right? Yeah, International Women's Day, fantastic. Woo, uh, you're in uh, talk TV. That'll be the last radio, time we... That's, that'll, be, <laughs> that'll be the... Uh, uh, last time uh, that uh, we mentioned International Women's Day. Uh, but, uh, well, you're telling me yeah. what to do on International Women's Day. Maybe I'm going to mention it more times. Well, uh, yeah, do that and bore <laughs> everyone to tears. Uh, anyway, on International, on International Women's Day, Day. we're going to race through the headlines for the next uh, thrilling half an hour. So let's get going. Massive news today. The world's worst Prime Minister, Theresa May is standing down as an MP at the next election after representing Maidenhead uh, for 27 years, and we all remember her as Prime Minister. I mean, I would say that certainly in my lifetime, I'd say she's the worst Prime Minister we ever had. I mean, we sort she's of... Not there's, the there's not It's not really worth talking about uh, Theresa uh, um, I think in the Liz Truss. dreadful Prime Ministers, I'd she, say old spade face above Theresa May. Cameron oh, was a come on. monster. She was, she was worse. She, nah, was she wasn't. Well, look, she was oh, what? Effective. Well, what about her Brexit disaster? 2002. Oh, no, I agree with that. 2002. Like, podge, podge, 2002. Deal. She made the speech that ruined the Conservative Party. She went to the conference and she said, uh, "We uh, we mustn't be the nasty party anymore." And ever since then, they've been trying to copy Labour. They've been obsessed with not being nasty. You got it all wrong, Theresa. We should have remained, or the Tories should have remained, as the nasty What disappoints party. me about Theresa May is when she first burst onto the scene as Prime Minister, she said some stuff, and I was like, yeah, girl, I want that. She wanted some fucking, she wanted grammar schools. Yeah. I was like, boom, 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 boom. Um, and she didn't do any of it. And then she ugly cried and left. She was, um, she so was... not a really great tenure, I agree <sighs> with that. <laughs> ugly <laughs> cried, that's a bit she unfair. Did ugly well, cry. OK, let's see. All right, let's check, check if you're right. Is this ugly crying? Take it away upset Theresa May. I will shortly leave the job that it has been the honour of my life to hold. The second female Prime Minister, but certainly not the last. I do so with no ill will, but with enormous and enduring gratitude to have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. That's not, that's not ugly crying. I, 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 I felt for her then, you know. I did. I don't dislike Theresa May. I hate to burst your bubble. I actually think she's a woman of uh, great fortitude and conviction. She's a very decent woman. But I don't think she did the job very well. I do agree with that. Yeah, she was useless. Absolutely useless. But, she I complete, mean, completely screwed Brexit. She tried Space to... Uh, she, basically, she basically tried to overturn a democratic uh, uh, vote, uh, the uh, referendum, of course, and on Brexit and... Uh, that's what she tried to do. She tried. To, she decided that the British people had made the wrong decision, and she was going to water well, it down. It was the last thing she did, she, and it I cost think her her job. It's kind of more complex than that. I think what she tried to do is try and please both sides. And say, yeah, we're going to have Brexit. I'm going to uh, please the Brexiteers, and yeah, I'm going to please the Remainers as well, and bring the country together by both being out and being in. And it's like. That doesn't work. Yeah, useless. Absolutely useless. Uh, and uh, here she is again. Take it away, Theresa. What's the naughtiest thing you ever did? Oh, goodness me. Um, I, well, I suppose the... Uh, gosh. I, do you know? I'm not quite sure. Well, there must well, have been a moment. Nobody is, nobody's ever perfectly <laughs> behaved, are they? I mean, you know, I have to confess, when me and my friends sort of used to run through the fields of wheat, um, the farmers weren't too pleased about that. <laughs> Run through the fields Kef. of wheat. Rock and roll, Teresa. Kev, what's the naughtiest thing you've ever done? Yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> uh, put it this way, it wasn't running through fields of wheat. Might have been doing things in fields of wheat, but uh, we <laughs> won't go there. Right, uh, uh, Jeremy Hunt's budget, he was on, on the circuit yesterday, uh, Alex, uh, <laughs> boasting about how this was the groundwork for a new and prosperous future. This would, tur this would, turn, the, the this would turn the good ship yeah. uh, Tory but around. Guess Tory what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? 
Uh, Labour have increased their lead <laughs> over the Tories since the budget. Oh. They got up one point. They're now on 47. And uh, the Tories are way down on 20, I do believe. So uh, the, the budget has actually made things worse for the Tories and better for Labour. So, Jeremy, why don't you hit the media circuit again and tell us why that is? Uh, it's just I'm sorry about all of this. It's, every time the consensus like, we're the party for growth, well, clearly, evidentially, you're not. We're the party for low migration. Clearly, evidentially, you're not. We're the party of low taxation. Clearly, evidentially, you're not. Stop gaslighting us. Yeah. Then they go, well, we haven't been here that long. If you give us five more years, look how great the country's going to be. Uh, We've been saying that for 15. Yeah, well, uh, in five years' time, I don't suppose it'll be a Tory government, but, uh, uh, you know, the as I say, the Tories are a sinking ship. I mean, there's nothing that can be done. And quite clearly, mm -hmm. uh, this rather dreary budget, mm -hmm. uh, what was it Justin Arcart Stewart said, to us the other day, I said, so, Justin, you're the expert, uh, you're the banker, you're the economist. Uh, what's your headline on uh, this budget? <laughs> he went, dull, dull, dull. Everyone uh, you spoke to sort of went, everything's rubbish, but hopefully things won't get more rubbish. Yeah. yeah. They uh, will. Yeah, and of course, on the BBC yesterday, uh, uh, Jeremy Hunt was called the fiscal drag queen and he lost his rag about that and started moaning it's about the drag. BBC. Actually, Maybe. for once, I think Amal Rajan on the BBC... Just I don't, bang think, on. I don't yeah. think he was being biased. He was giving Jeremy Hunt the facts Keep and Jeremy Hunt didn't facts. like the facts. So he started going, oh, this, is, this does, it doesn't behove the BBC at all well. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut up. Uh, talking about things getting much worse. Here we go. Yeah. Which you see, like, under fire as guess who is coming in their droves? That's right, the channel migrants. Hey. the party. They can't wait to be here. They're loving it. Uh, he's been accused yet again of failing to stop migrant crossings because arrivals have topped 3,000 for the year so far. We're not even in spring yet. We're, the weather's still rubbish. <laughs> it's chilly out there. It's like an Arctic blast walking into the building this morning. And there they are on their boats. Can you imagine how it's going to look in summertime? We may as well just build some sort of special red carpet across the channel. Yeah, 3,000 so far and rising by the day. We've had days in the last week, I think it was last Saturday, 150. I think Sunday was 350. And still they come. And uh, uh, old uh, Rishi, I'm going to stop the boats. What is his attitude now? I'll tell you what he's doing. He's going, la, 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 la. No migrant crisis. La, 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 la. <laughs> well, it's still going on. And uh, that is one more reason, Rishi, that you have steered the good ship Tory into choppy waters and you will lose the next election. This is the country of amazing seafaring, one of the best navies in the world of old. And, uh, uh, you know, yeah, you... great gallant battles in the oceans. We fought off the Spanish and their armada. There's Admiral Nelson in the middle of Trafalgar <laughs> Square putting two fingers up at the French. And then we got some little tow rags in boats and we can't stop them. Are you kidding me? Yeah. We, we're hoping to have a picture of uh, uh, Admiral Nelson putting two fingers up at the French. French, but uh, we can't run that for legal reasons. Uh, now, uh, a show... factoid on a Friday. It's like a factoid on a Friday. The actual two fingers sign comes from Agincourt, and it was where the English longbowmen needed to use their two fingers to pull back their string with the arrow in and launch it at the French. And so the French, when they caught some, would chop off their fingers. And so to taunt the French, if a bowman still had his fingers, he showed no, them. Don't, don't do French. the sign because uh, no, can't do it's, sign. it's a nasty sign. No, uh, that's people... fascinating. I didn't oh, know. Did I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know that. Two I love, I love stuff. On I love stuff like that. Right, thank you. you. Uh, now, Joe Biden, uh, he's 81, uh, very much. Every single one of his 81 years. Uh, old fossil, you know, losing it and all that. But uh, he's coming out fighting. Uh, he says, uh, you know, he's bang up for the battle with Donald Trump, oh, uh, for the presidential uh, brutal 2024 race. Uh, and here he is, actually, uh, in one of his kind of rare, almost uh, cognizant moments. Take it away. I know it may not look like it, but I've been around a while. <laughs> when you get to be my age, certain things become clearer than ever. I know the American story. Again and again, I've seen the contest between competing forces in the battle for the soul of our nation, between those who want to pull America back to the past and those who want to move America into the future. My lifetime has taught me to embrace freedom and democracy a future based on core values that have defined America, honesty, decency, dignity, equality, to respect everyone, to give everyone a fair shot, to give hate no safe harbor. Now, other people my age see it differently. 
The American story of resentment, revenge, and retribution, that's not me. The issue facing our nation isn't how old we are, it's how old are our ideas. Yeah. You know what? People like the old ideas because America used to be better than it is now. People are, I want old America back. You know, land of a, the free with a competent president, big on the world stage, no zombie drug takers wandering around the streets, living in uh, tents, That'll be the day. <laughs> outside office blocks, no millions of migrants forcing their way across the southern border. That's the America people. What they want, old America, you wanna, you not want, old Biden. Yeah, you want to crack at uh, old America, you better vote Donald Trump because uh, exactly. old America Biden won't. Again, and he, again. He said, uh, fired up uh, as he was yesterday. This was his State of the Union address. Uh, he said, the issue facing the nation isn't how old we are. Uh, yeah, no, it, you're, you're <laughs> right about that. No, the issue facing the American nation, Joe, is how old you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this guy hasn't got his marbles, uh, and if he, he, uh, it'd be really interesting to see if he takes up Donald Trump's challenge to do these TV debates uh, when the Democrats probably try and lock Joe in his bunker and won't let him do those debates. It'll be a really key moment because Trump will go to town on that and everyone will know why Biden won't go face to face with uh, Trump because he fears he's lose because he just hasn't got it up there. Uh, ridiculous situation that one of the candidates, uh, frankly, has lost his marbles. Uh, so uh, there you go. Uh, lots of fun ahead, though, on the American election trail. Now, do you know what day it is other than International Women's oh, Day? Oh, God. Did it again. Yeah. Uh, it is the day that Sweden finally joins NATO. Welcome. We love the Scandies. But, uh, they are in. This is after Turkey basically dropped their opposition because they didn't like the fact that Sweden and had a, what they consider Kurdish terrorists. They've got all sorts of people in Sweden. They haven't been particularly good on their borders. But they're part of us now. They're going to help us uh, fight all the baddies in the world if they try and fight us. And this is good. This is very yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, and don't forget sort of Sweden, Finland, right on the border with Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, Putin has never wanted them to join uh, the international NATO club. Uh, now they have. Uh, so if Putin messes around with Finland or Sweden, NATO are ready to step in. So uh, it's a very significant international step, mm. uh, which will not uh, be causing much celebrations in the Kremlin. Uh, but, uh, you know, if it ever come, push comes to shove, the one thing that Putin always uh, bears in mind is if it did come to a war between mm. NATO and Russia, Russia loses. I think one of that. the important things about this, so Finland and Sweden uh, always historically maintained a neutrality. They didn't want to get caught in the battle between Russia and the West because, well, once upon a time, Russia marched all their troops in and took them over. Um, but Russia's invasion of Ukraine has rather changed their mind. But the important thing here is to say that NATO's territory now, in terms of the oceans, really expands into important places like up into the Arctic because Finland and Sweden have a load of, uh, you know, uh, islands, archipelagos, and lots of sort of sea territory up there, which is the ice melts and Russia starts to do mad things. Yeah. That's NATO's land. It's all we'll about see. the archipelagos. Uh, yeah. Right, let's move on. Meghan Markle is preparing for a relaunch in the UK, apparently. <laughs> she's reached out to British uh, PR gurus, public relations people, for help as she battles with her popularity problem in Britain. Gee, Meghan, why do you think you're not very popular over here? Really can't explain that, can you? What is utterly <clears throat> insane? saying about this is Megan herself wouldn't even follow the advice that people like you and I would give her. What would we say? We'd say, Megan, first of all, stand up and say, I've been sorry, I've been wrong, I shouldn't have said terrible things about the royal family, it's definitely not racist, and I feel absolutely dreadful for the web of lies that I have spun and that play acting I did with Oprah. I also want to say the British people are great, but I love Sussex, it's a wonderful place to be, and I'm going for a pint down in Eastbourne to sit on the pebble beach seafront and enjoy the view of the I don't think she's ever been to Sussex. Uh, well, we cer certainly will never go there again. As I always say, that woman will not set foot back in this country ever again. Uh, the way Harry's going, he won't be welcome either. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, Meghan has been billed. Are oh, you going to be excited by this? <laughs> On International Women's it's Day. International Women's Day. Uh, Meghan Markle has been billed as a visionary female leader. Who exactly? What's her vision? Who exactly does she lead? And, and what's her vision? I yeah. don't like who is yeah, who does she lead? And what, yeah. like, what are you? Yeah, but uh, just to show you, she's in amazing company. Uh, along among the other people that build as visionary female leaders are. Brooke Shields and Katie Couric. How did Brooke Shields lead the way? Just by growing big yeah. eyebrows He's and a, making that fine if again? She's, if, she, about? if Megan's a leader, who does she lead? 
I mean, it's just her and that ginger bloke in that Montecito mansion pumping out woke claptrap that no one's interested in, losing contracts left, right and centre, uh, sponsoring her husband oh, to write that God. nasty little book, her useless podcast uh, series, Archetypes, which was cancelled <laughs> cancelled due to lack of interest. Why is she... It's the usual, you know, that you can play like bingo with this stuff, can't you? The drop-down menu of words that woke people like to use. Fostering is one of them. They love fostering. Uh, but this one is breaking barriers, shaping narratives. Yeah, uh... What? Uh, Apparently, she, mental health. OK, so I'm going to say something here. Meghan Markle is neither visionary nor a leader, although I will accept that on International Women's Day, she is female. That's about it. Should, next time you give her an award, just say, we're giving her this award because she's female, because that pretty much sums up her achievements in life. And also, she should say sorry for the sorely overrated claptrap drama, Suits cable show not many people watched. Right, uh, still with the gruesome twosome from Montecito, uh, Prince Harry has been mocked in a withering put-down by the England rugby coach, uh, Eddie Jones. So it was back in the day. It was when uh, Prince Harry uh, was the uh, kind of president of the British Rugby Association. Anyway, he turned up for a training session and uh, Eddie Jones, uh, a no-nonsense guy, turned around and said, how's the climate change going, mate? How's, how was Elton John's jet? and so on and so forth. So this was just after Harry and Meghan, great campaigners for climate change, for ecological uh, wonderment. Uh, they, all, they got on Elton John's private jet and Elton John said, well, that was for security. So never mind the planet, their security is more important. than. The, and uh, no nonsense, uh, Aussie uh, Eddie Jones, the then England ma uh, manager, just turned rounded on him and put him in his place. How's the climate change going, mate? How was Elton John's jet? I bet you, Harry, I wouldn't mind being a fly on the wall there, well, would you? Apparently Harry used to go and watch the England rugby team train. Apparently that's according to Dan Cole. Um, I mean, Harry should get back on the rugby pitch and stop whining and just be knocked about around the head a little bit. It might help his uh, brainwaves. Uh, yeah, now, still with Harry, uh, this is interesting. Uh, you, you know this uh, business with his uh, visa application, so he admitted in his rubbish book, Spare. Well, actually, it's quite... It's a good read, Spare, but it's a nasty book. Uh, he admitted in that book, you know, copious drug consumption, mushrooms, mm. cocaine, uh, cannabis. That's psychedelic uh, jungle one. Yeah, and uh, so he admitted to that. Now, if you take... If you're a foreigner and you want to live in America... Uh, you can't have taken drugs. You, you mustn't take drugs. And you drugs. can't have lied on you your visa application so, so, either. So here's the point. Uh, either he told the truth on his visa application and said, I have taken drugs. So you're right. Or, or he lied so you're right. and said, I haven't. Uh, either way, it should put him in big trouble. Now, you know the Heritage Foundation, a right-wing think tank, uh, uh, taking the government to court, the American government to court to say, you know, we want to see this visa application. They tried to get him kicked out because of his drug consumption. Uh, old uh, forelock touching Joe Biden and the dozy de deferential Democrats let him stay. Uh, so then the Heritage Foundation said, well, look, well, let's see, let's have a look at his visa application. What did oh, no, 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 we're not going to show you that. Uh, in other words, in other words, America is supposed to treat everyone the same. Now, you, me, Alex, you, me, all of you, you try going to America and saying, oh, can I live here, please? I've taken loads of drugs, loads of drugs. They, you won't even get past passport control. So why are they giving this guy special well, uh, treatment? It is not the American Trump, way. Trump's turned around and basically said if he gets into power, he's going to get that visa out. Oh, yeah, of Exactly. He, he said he's now, not going to protect it. By the way, Spare's been nominated for uh, two awards at uh, the British Book uh, oh, Awards, and uh, I think they are nastiest book ever. Uh, best book not written by the author. It was written by a ghostwriter because, now, let's face it, Harry ain't that bright, is this he? This next story, I think, is really important. Yeah. So yeah. this is uh, the good old yeah, Robin really... Simcox, who is the counter-extremism czar for the government, who's making some very well-timed and important interventions. This is the man who pointed out those pro-Palestine protests were in part being organised by terrorist organisations and groups connected to Hamas. Reason enough, I would say, to ban them. Uh, but he's now turned around and said these pro-Palestine protesters are turning London into a no-go zone for Jews. Now, what's important about this is when London MP Paul Scully turned around and said, there are parts of London that have become no-go zones, he was attacked ruthlessly. He had to apologise. He was told, you can't say that, that's a far-right trope, how dare you? He's actually decided not to stand as an MP in the next election. And I'm like, do you know what, Paul Scully, you're the man, have your day, you were right, back 
locked up here. Shut up everyone else who's trying to shut down the debate. This can't go on. And I'm sick to death of being censored on the problem we have in this country when it comes to a small subset of society who want to destroy us from inside. We've got to be able to talk about it. And thank you, Robin Simcox, for your hard work as well. Uh, and also, this is really important, he slammed the government, and this is the crux of the matter, he slammed the government for letting extremists go unchallenged for too long. Yeah. Uh, think about that. Those pro-Palestinian marches, they're, it's ex they're extreme, they're full of law-breaking, right and, and we just let them happen. Goes on them. Right. Know you're walking with terrorists and doing the work. Now, J.K. Rowling, <laughs> J.K. Rowling uh, has, re has been reported to the police no. by a trans activist, India Willoughby. India is, of course, a trans woman, uh, but uh, she thinks she's a real, uh, a biological woman as well. Uh, I said real there, that'd probably get me in big trouble. Uh, she thinks she's she's look look she's not a woman she's a trans woman i will call her she i will respect her uh for the lifestyle short choice she has made but she seems to think that if someone like jk rowling doesn't want to call her she doesn't want to call her her uh then that's against the law misgendering is not against the law what i think is hilarious is jk rowling did not take this line down she never does jk we love her she turned around and kept calling india a man which i sort of tittered at but then she pulled out a load of historic things that india willoughby has put on twitter such as slagging off other trans people for not looking womenly enough slagging off the gay community being essentially homophobic a little bit racist in one particular tweet. So, do you know what, India Willoughby, before you go around pointing your fingers at people for hate speech, maybe have a little look at some of your mm. tweeting archive because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not covering yourself in glory. And exactly why has she reported J.K. Rowling to the police? Because it is not illegal. If you fancy, I wouldn't do it because I don't want to be rude and make people upset, but if you want to call a trans woman a bloke, it's not against the law. It's not against the law. So she's wrong about this. An interesting story, though. Now, this, we're going to be dealing with with this later on the cross talk this afternoon. Very good, very uh, 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 disturbing story, really. Hollyoaks, the channel for soap, uh, has got a trans storyline for a 12 year old girl who wants to change gender. And uh, the uh, let's have a look, let's have a look at this, some of this. It'll be okay, just let's take it one step at a time. I don't know what the first step is. I'm a boy, but my body's all wrong, and how am I supposed to tell my parents? Hey, I'll help you in whatever way I can. But you need to know that your life is in your hands. So stop bunking off school. And then, and only then, we can start thinking about how and when you can tell your mum. Holly woke yeah, there. Yeah, mitts off that child. Would you? She's 12. Her life isn't in her own hands. She is a minor. Stop it. Yeah. This is so deranged. Well, it, wor worse than that, uh, this is all pretend. This is all make-believe on the soap Holly Wokes, as we're now calling it. Yeah. And uh, we'll be talking later on to Tory MP Nick Fletcher, good, good, who has good. slammed Channel 4, uh, saying that they should be ashamed yes. of this uh, storyline. I mean, it's very eye-catching, but, but what, I don't think it's very responsible. What Nick Fletcher has said, the Don Valley MP, and this is important, I want to add a bit to this. Yeah. He said, in 1994, the London Gender Clinic for children saw 12 yeah. children. 30 years on, it's seeing thousands. Why? This is why. Adults, all kinds of organisations are planting in children's minds an idea with no basis in science nor evidence, which, if pursued, will in all likelihood put these children on a pathway to irreversible harm. Now, another factoid is gender dysphoria happens in about 0.01% of the population, pretty much overwhelmingly to men, right? It's very much a male condition. And yet now, all the people turning up at these genital mutilation clinics seem to be girls girls, especially autistic girls, because they're being constantly fed the fact that if you don't look like a Kardashian, you're not worthy, you'd better off be a man. It is sick, it is wrong, from breast binding to mastectomies as teenagers to puberty blockers, this right. is child abuse. It mustn't be encouraged by programmes on television. This has got to stop. Uh, well said, what she said, I agree. On International Women's Day. <laughs> <laughs> We said we weren't going to mention Women's International Day. Women's Day. We said it about 500 it. <laughs> times. Right, still uh, with International Women's Day. I don't know why I said that. Uh, it's time. We should get a theme tune for this. What? For our <laughs> Red Bull <laughs> slot. Uh, Christian Horner, the boss of uh, the Red Bull team, who, of course, has been involved in this long-going uh, saga about uh, sexy, sexting Sex, uh, between uh, him and a female employee. That female employee has now been suspended for alleged dishonesty 
Remember, Christian Horner uh, has been exonerated by an external uh, inquiry of any wrongdoing and continues to deny any wrongdoing, but he's involved in a row with Max Verstappen, the uh, driver's dad, Joss Verstappen. Uh, but anyway, here's Christian trying to pour oil on uh, troubled waters yesterday. Mm. Well, obviously, there's been an awful lot of, uh, you know, coverage surrounding this, but one has to go back to the, to the basis of a grievance was raised, it was fully investigated, and it was dismissed. And from there, we move onwards. And I think the time now is to, to look forward and to draw a line under it. The time now is to focus on what is going on on track. Meanwhile, our thoughts are with Ginger Spice Jerry Halliwell, who is married to uh, Christian Horner. But uh, we need to move on to our other I was regulars. Say, good news: Red Bull is leading in the free practices one and two in Saudi Arabia. So it's not really hurting. Yeah, they keep chances. winning. So what the hell? Oh, the They've got some gone. sort of you know this turmoil is obviously a winning formula. So mm. it'll probably carry on. Celebrity Big Brother uh, Sharon Osbourne calls Adele fake in a brutal swipe, Wouldn't but she me. continues to share her real thoughts on Hollywood stars. And we're not going to tell you what she said about James. Corden, uh, have we got time to play this? Girls lost away a little bit. I think that she plays the old oh, love. Oh, wow, girl, 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 I'm so English. I love you, by the way. That's brilliant. And it's like, cut the <laughs> You don't talk like that Just anymore. Sing. Just sing, just be true to who you are. But she does all this old English, you know. <laughs> But Here's to you, Mrs. Mean? O. Hold Here's on. to you. I'm sorry, but what if that is actually Adele's accent? We've got to go. We've got to go. Sadly, we have come to the end of the show. Uh, Thank you Alex. for tuning in on International Women's Day. <laughs> Join us a bit later where I'm going to take control of our show, International Women's Day special edition of Crosstalk. Up next, Douglas <laughs> Murray. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. Isn't that? Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yeah. Quite yeah. right, too. Yeah. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <missing. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would